Hello everyone, it's Mostrino here. As I mentioned in the last video, today we're going to be talking about advanced mashup techniques. You know, really going into those kind of crazy mashups that can hopefully really impress people and really set you apart from the crowd. And now, unlike some of the previous videos where I've kind of been doing these examples from scratch, I decided that for this one specifically, it would be better if I go into examples that I've already made and kind of break down what's going on in there and what are like the, the big picture ideas that you can implement in your own projects. But first, there's one tip that I kind of want to get out of the way really quickly. And this is something that I should have mentioned in the first video when I was talking about, you know, wanting to do this series for a long time. Something that I should have mentioned is that part of that included reaching out to the majority of the mix contest finalists from 2019 onwards and the majority of the elite judges and kind of just asking them, you know, what tips and techniques should I include for this series? Because I wanted to get as much information as possible so that it wasn't just from my perspective, but rather from the perspectives of all of these people who have been selected as finalists to the mix contest and in some cases have even won the mix contests. So I got a lot of great tips from them. Some of them were things that I was going to include anyway, but there were some that I didn't think about. And this one that I'm going to talk about right now was a tip that I didn't even know about before. So I'm going to have to give credit to Maquil for showing me this one. And this has to do, as you can see, I've got the stack mashup pulled up that we made in the last video. And if you remember in the last video, something that I talked about with stack mashups is that you never want to have more than one low end playing at the same time. If you're stacking multiple tracks, you're going to want to cut the low ends of the other tracks. And again, if we listen to Wake Up Your Dreaming, this is the one that we keep the low end of. Whereas Dreaming, on the other hand, we get rid of the low end. But something that you might have thought about is if you're putting, let's say, two tracks on top of each other. Obviously, you can put more if you want. But let's say two tracks on top of each other. You only have one low end playing, but you have two mids playing and you have two highs playing. Wouldn't that make the low end too quiet? Because if the mids and the highs are double the volume that they were before, but the low end is just normal volume, then that's going to make them uneven, right? In this specific example, Wake Up Your Dreaming by itself has a much stronger low end than its mids and highs, and you can even see it visually here. You can see that the low end is, is hitting way higher than the mids and the highs. So in this specific example, we don't really need to make those adjustments, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway, because there are going to be a lot of cases uh, that aren't exceptions like this one. You know, a lot of cases where, you know, both the tracks have really strong mids and highs. And when you put them together, those lows aren't as strong as they need to be. So this tip from Mockwill is, is a really clever way to fix this problem. And this is my uh, little variation on it that I'm going to show to you. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into Wake Up Your Dreaming or whatever track we're using the low end of and open up one of the newer FL plugins, actually, the Frequency Splitter. And by default, it has three bands, but we only need the lows and everything that's not the lows. So let's go ahead and switch this to two. Then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into Dreaming and see where are we cutting out the lows? What does that slope look like, right? Maybe we want to match up the slopes, uh, make this a little gentler. And then what frequency is it cutting off at? And you can see 119 hertz. So let's match that with this frequency splitter. Uh, let's go ahead into this frequency. Let's drag it down and you can see in the top left uh, what number it is until we get it to 119. It's close enough. And there we go. And now that we've got this set up, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make a mixer track for the lows and for everything that isn't the lows. I'll call it the highs. I mean, it includes the mids too, but we'll, we'll just call it lows and highs for simplicity's sake. And now what we're going to want to do is go into this lows track, hit side chain to this track only, and then the highs side chain to this track. And if you're wondering where to get that pop-up, it's just right clicking the arrow. 
And now what we want to do is notice how there's the sends section of the frequency splitter. The mids are grayed out, so we ignore that, but the lows just right click and let's send them to the lows. Highs right click and let's send them to the highs. And now you'll notice that if I solo the lows here, it's just the low end of um, Wake Up Your Dreaming. If we solo the highs, it doesn't have that low end anymore. So now what that allows us to do is it allows us to use these faders uh, to really neatly uh, get the lows to the volume that we need them to be at. And what I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna link Dreaming to the highs mixer track. That way when I change the highs, not only is it changing the mids and lows of Wake Up Your Dreaming, but it's actually just changing the mids and lows of the entire mashup. So then I can control the lows and everything but the lows and level those in just with these two faders. And again, like I mentioned with this mashup, Wake Up Your Dreaming has very strong lows, so we don't really need this technique, but there are going to be a lot of cases where this technique really comes in handy. So being able to just have, you know, these two faders and being able to mix them in at the exact right amount is going to be really important because you're going to want to have your low end consistent throughout the whole mashup. You're not going to want to have one section with a really strong low end and then another section with a much quieter low end right because with these mixes you know consistency is key you know making sure you have equal volume of everything and that everything feels like it's meant to be together so this technique again have to give credit to Maquil and thanks to him for for sharing this with me is a really smooth way to make sure that you're keeping everything consistent but now that we have that done i can dive in to some of these other mashups some of my own examples here and kind of talk about what are we doing here that can really help us stand out? So the way that I've kind of decided to organize this is I wanted to go from the simplest ones to the most complex, um, generally speaking. So I'm just going to go ahead and open these projects and we're going to talk about them. All right, so we're going to go ahead and play this one first. This is just a simple two-track mashup, taking over Gravit's remix and Evolution by Mr. Fiji Ouija. And again, if we take a look at this, this still follows a lot of the um, fundamentals of, in this case, stack mashups that we were talking about before, right? Like we have the side chain, and we're also making sure that we're removing the low end, as I had mentioned with the stack mashups as well. But beyond that, this is kind of a nice and simple way to talk about chops, right? Maybe we're taking a little bit of a section from this track if we uh, pull it out. This one's really nice because it has some isolated uh, sections in it. And again, track selection is kind of important to determine how much of these things you're going to be able to do based on how isolated the elements are in the track. But really the main thing is, is chopping these little sections of evolution to match the rhythm of the Taking Over Gravits remix. Right? And again, it's a pretty simple example, but doing these chops and changing the rhythm of tracks is a really neat and pretty reliable way to keep things interesting, right? Because you're taking a track and you're making it play a rhythm that it normally doesn't play. And this is a lot less noticeable, but we also did a little bit of chopping with taking over as well to keep the snares playing here. 
Normally, it would have sounded like this. But then we chopped it to sound like this. Right, again, just doing these little edits is something that's perfectly acceptable and a really neat way to keep things interesting and to make things unique to your mix. These next few examples are all taken from my Knocking Out Cancer Mix, which is up on my channel if you want to take a listen. This is the mashup that I did between Gold and Victory. <laughs> So let's break down what's going on here. Well, Victory doesn't really have too much going on with it. It's just kind of playing the, the track. But then this goes back to the usefulness of stems because Coven gave out stems to their track Gold, which included the, the choir and vocal stems. So that made it a lot easier to do this kind of mashup. But the main thing to point out here is the usage of volume automation. Whereas in the previous example, I used chops to change the rhythm of the track and make them uh, fit together. In this one, I'm using volume automation to do a very similar effect. And I know that the volume automation to some people might seem kind of tricky and tedious to set up, but really, I just needed to set up this single automation clip and then, you know, make it match the rhythm uh, for this section. And then, after that, it's just copy-paste. So, you know, just take a minute to, to set it up uh, correctly in the beginning, and then it'll be smooth sailing from there. Which, again, is why this is one of the first couple examples, because it, it is simpler, right? We're just having to use a, a Fruity Balance automation clip and again, this is still something that can uh, really make you stand out because nowhere else are you going to hear the vocals of, of gold in a rhythm like this. So again, kind of doing a little bit of rhythm matching and, and changing up the rhythm of tracks, like I mentioned, is going to be a very effective way of keeping your mix unique. And the other thing that I should mention before I move on with from this mashup uh, specifically is that I also chopped up the choir and vocal stems just to make it work a little bit better in the context of the mashup. You know, sometimes there might be parts of the stem that don't work that well. Well, you're free to chop it around and rearrange it in the way that works best for whatever you're trying to do. Right, because in this case, if I had just done the normal choir stem, it would have come out like this. And I felt like for this mashup, it sounded better if I chopped it around with the volume automation for it to sound like this. And again, I chopped around the main vocal as well. Instead of... Because there it just kind of fades out. Whereas with this, it can stick around longer. This next one is similar to the last example, but a little bit more complex, which is why I'm putting it afterwards. Again, this one's another one taken from the KOC mix. This is You and Me by Snaus with Hades by Slumberjack and FOMO. And if we take a look at these tracks by themselves, again, chopping up Hades to make it fit a little bit better. But aside from that, it's just kind of playing normally. And the real interesting stuff comes in with you and me. So what's going on here? First, we're using uh, volume automation just like the last one, 
except for this one we're using a little bit more of a gated um, sharp volume automation whereas with the other one it was a lot gentler more gradual uh, just because if we take a listen to Hades the hits are a lot more percussive and snappy so I wanted to mimic that with you and me so that's why I did this volume automation Again, just kind of matching up the rhythms and keeping things interesting because You and Me doesn't have this rhythm in the original track, so you wouldn't hear it outside of the mix. But then, the thing that makes this more complex is that I'm also utilizing panning. I know that this is set to balance, but that's because uh, this balance has a panning knob as well. So it's not just about volume automation. Panning automation can also be another good way to spice things up with your mix and get the listener's attention, especially if they're wearing headphones, hearing things go from ear to ear is definitely going to get their attention. And then again, all together. And here's how it would have sounded without any panning. So if you're listening on like a phone speaker or something, you might not hear the difference, but especially on headphones, you can hear that uh, the mashup pops out a lot more with the panning. So thinking about panning as well, use, utilizing creative panning effects might be another way to make your mix and, and mashups stand out. So now this next example, also taken from the KOC mix, it's the mashup between Motion by Rogue and the Grab It's remix of Build the Cities by Karma Fields. <laughs> And so, when we take a look at this one, again, we still have the same usage of volume automation because if we take a look at Build the Cities, we can kind of analyze the pattern and try and replicate it with motion. But the other two things I want to point out before I play this is, not only are we using volume automation, but we're also chopping up motion to get the best kind of pattern for this mashup, make sure that that lines up as well. And we're also doing a little bit of EQ automation for an extra effect there as well. And something that you're going to notice once I play this that you probably didn't notice in the original mashup is if I play the normal Rogue. It would be very difficult for me to uh, match this up with Build the City's Gravity Remix, which is, first of all, part of the reason why I tried to do it, right? Trying to push yourself and um, do things that don't seem like they're possible. But in that, I ended up stretching motion quite a bit to get it in the right kind of rhythm. So there's some stretching there as well, which is definitely hurting the quality. You're going to notice it, but since I'm layering it on top of Build the City's, then the quality decrease is a lot less noticeable in the final mashup, but when I play it by itself, you're definitely going to notice it. So it definitely does not sound that great on its own, but that's kind of the interesting thing about these mashups is that you could have one element that sounds really wacky, 
by itself, but when you put everything together, it just works. And the other thing that you'll probably notice that I'm doing with this mashup is that I've got the drums separate here just to keep them as clean as possible. I'm using a, two different cymatic samples actually. I'm using one over here and then um, a bass here, one over here. And then as for the snare, I just took a section, of, a little portion of the Gravitz remix where the snare was kind of isolated and went ahead and used that. Because I should mention that when I made this, this was before Melody ML had um, the HQ mode, so the stem separation was a much uh, less reliable. And the other thing worth mentioning here is that I also decided to do a little bit of an effect uh, with pitching down a motion a ton in this uh, kind of growl section just to kind of get those matching up as well. So even though it sounds really weird by itself, they work together. And the other thing I should mention is that I'm also using reverse kicks a little bit, which is a bit more of a production technique, but those can also help kind of just sweep into the next section. The next one that I want to talk about is in the same project file. It's this mashup between Blink and You Will Cry and Damp Kring, or however you pronounce that title. So let's break down what's going on here, right? First of all, this kind of goes back to the uh, evolution taking over mashup with just chopping things to match the, the rhythm. To match the, uh, the drums of Damp Kring's buildup. And if we take a look at Damp Kring, I'm, I'm chopping it up a little bit, but for the most part, it's just playing the normal track. And where things really get interesting is with Blink and You Will Cry. For this, I'm using the Kilohertz filter and again thinking about the fundamentals, taking out the low end as always is very important for these stack mashups and I'm sticking to it. This is different from all the examples that I've shown so far because the other ones have used volume automation. This one's actually using filter automation because that's what is happening in the original Damp Kring actually. So I'm using Blink and You Will Cry and completely transforming it to do the same kind of technique that Damp Kring is doing. And you don't actually need kilohertz filter to do this, although it, it's definitely easier with it. But you can just do this with like a normal EQ. Uh, automating the cutoff as well. But I'll have this up here so you can see what it's doing. I'm higher. And this is one where, I mean, I might be wrong about this, but I can't think of any examples of someone using filter automation in the mix contest. So again, getting creative with your effects and doing stuff that the judges would not expect you to do can really help you stand out and can really help you impress people. <laughs> And 
And again, just like with the past few examples, something else that I should mention um, is chopping up Blink and You Will Cry to get the best result. And of course, those chops seem really wacky without the filter, but once you have the filter and once you know what you're going for, then you can kind of figure out which sections work the best. And even this that I also should mention is that I did some repitching uh, with the, the track as well to get the melodies that I wanted out of it. Which sounds really weird on its own, but with the filter it works. And now this next example is actually not taken from KOC, the KOC mix. It is one that I actually did use in the mix contest, the Particles, and only in a Dream mashup, uh, one of my most popular ones. So again, let's go ahead and play this real quick. I'll break down the first section, and then I'll break down the second section, which I know the second section is probably the one that you guys actually want me to talk about, but let's talk about this first section uh, here real quick. So particles, pretty normal. Uh, just did a little bit of chopping to keep things exactly how I wanted them. Let's look at only in a dream. Using a little bit of volume automation to match up with the rhythm of particles. Because particles is in triplets and only in a dream isn't. So I've got to use this volume automation to make them match up. And then also using some cymatic samples in this case, just to kind of make sure the drums really pop out, layering with the drums on particles. I know that this sounds like a really silly snare here, but it's really just the attack of the snare that I needed to pop out. So I didn't need to have a longer snare. And then without. And then with. And you can see that even just that little tiny uh, beginning part of the snare actually helps it out a lot. The other thing that I should mention, the last thing that I'll mention with this first section, is if I take off these vocals, notice how the vocals in Only in a Dream are almost inaudible. They get super buried. So this goes back to that uh, technique that I was talking about in the last video with dreaming, where I decided to, okay, then let's just isolate the vocals and layer them on top of the original so that they can uh, stand out and pop out a lot more. And this was back in June of last year. This was way before we had anything better than Splitter in terms of um, stem separation. So these vo this vocal quality is probably pretty rough. But I'm always awake when I'm yeah, you can hear the uh, characteristic splitter artifacts here. But again, just like with the dreaming example, even though it sounds bad on its own, since we're layering it with the original, it kind of the the problems kind of go away.
Now let's talk about this part. So particles, everything's normal. Just the first drop of particles, nothing to, to really care about. But let's take a look at only in a dream. You might be able to notice uh, much more easily here without a lot of these effects that this part of only in a dream is actually taken from the buildup. And this part, I just manually pitch it up a semitone. And then this is a part of the drop that I just chopped really aggressively. First of all, let's talk about the volume automation. This is the exact same thing that I was talking about with the Gold and Victory mashup, with the You and Me and Hades mashup, with the Motion and Build the Cities mashup. It's the same deal. The only difference is that this volume automation is more complex, took me longer to get it in the same rhythm as particles, but the fundamental concept is the same. And the other thing, just like with the uh, You and Me and Hades mashup, is utilizing panning to make it stand out more as well. In this case, the panning also not only makes it more interesting, but it also adds to the complexity because it's panning in a very different pattern than the volume automation. So again, all of that just makes it seem like a really crazy mashup. When you, when you really boil it down, this mashup isn't doing anything more than the You and Me and Hades mashup, for example. It's just that it's doing it in a more complex way, but the fundamentals are still the same. So even though, of course, it took me a lot longer to get all of this automation, uh, all of these automation clips right, and to find like a good section to chop of Only in a Dream to make this mashup work out, you know, it, of course, you probably heard the saying, you know, you, you get out what you put in. So if you're going to be willing to put in this extra work to really make these mashups pop, you already have the fundamentals. You just have to put in the extra work to get those automation clips down, to get these sections down. And I think it will really make a big difference in getting some really impressive results. All right, so here's the next one that I want to talk about. It uses other samples, but it's mostly more so on the edit side. Than the other examples I've talked about so far, kind of a bit of a drop edit of Carbonara by Pixel Terror and Spag Hetty. So let's talk about what's going on here. First of all, of course, the, the chopping is really important. Again, you know, chopping up the sample, getting it into a new rhythm, making things interesting. Also, I want to talk about reverb usage. I'm using Valhalla Supermassive for this one, but using the reverb was crucial here 
to make the the whole thing sound much more smooth instead of having it cut off. <laughs> Right, so reverb usage is huge. Another thing that was really big for this is the drum usage, you know, bringing in some of my own samples to make the buildup work. But also using the kick from Carbonara because otherwise, as you could probably tell, right, like that just completely throws off the rhythm. So using the kick there is really helpful. But the rhythm still doesn't really work there. So throwing in these rides to really maintain the rhythm as well as some other effects is what really helps make this mashup sound so cohesive. Because without them... And then with... It really feels so much more smooth and, and comes together so much more nicely. Uh, I think there are two other things that I want to talk about with regards to this sort of drop edit. The first thing is the usage of uh, this little reverse, which I believe I just put reverb on Carbonara and then reversed it, did a little volume automation. It really helps uh, kind of tease the fact that we're getting into the drop and makes it flow much more nicely without it. Versus with. Right, it helps bring you into it uh, much more smoothly as well as all of these other effects really helping with the transitions here. And the last thing that I want to talk about is this little effect right here because if I get rid of it, it sounds like this. And then with it on. And again, I know that this is something pretty niche uh, and specific to really just this mashup that you may or may not ever use in your own projects, but since I'm here, might as well talk about it. This is just a delay with a really low delay time and really high feedback, and that's what gives it this effect. And then I'm just kind of automating that in. And since the delay is also delaying the low ends as well, you can see that the low ends really get out of control, so that's what this EQ automation here is for. To kind of keep that uh, all in control. And then again, it's just a little nice, uh, tiny effect to keep things interesting. And also should mention the usage of reverse kicks again. So this one was mostly talking about chops, but also smoothing things out, whether it be with reverb, with effects, with you know reverse kicks and other reverses. Uh, those were kind of the main reasons uh, and the main things that I wanted to talk about with this mashup or, or this edit, and the main reason why I wanted to bring this one out as well. The next one that I want to talk about is uh, an also taken from my KOC mix. This is Collapse by Kuro and Have. Uh, mashed with Mimic by DropTech. And if we take a listen to this one... So Mimic is just kind of doing everything normal, nothing really special with Mimic. But the main thing that I wanted to talk about with this one, which is a little bit of a repeat of the points that I've made before, but it's the usage of reverb to fill out these mashups. This one, you notice that there's not really any automation. That's just because I set it up so that the reverb automatically comes in when there's silence instead of 
me having to automate it every time. So I just kind of set it up to do it automatically, but that's not something you have to worry about, right? Like if you're not sure how to set that up, you can just go ahead with the automations. But the main takeaway here is I want you to notice how much smoother and more full this mashup sounds with the usage of the reverb versus without it. And here's how the mashup sounds without the reverb. You can hear that it's really making a massive difference. And I feel like that using reverb in that way is something that has not really been talked about, but it can make a massive difference in filling out your mashups and making your cuts sound much more smooth. So that's why I wanted to bring up this example, because I think that this is probably the best example that I have of the kind of difference that that can make. All right, and now for this next one, we're here. We're in the, the legendary mix contest uh, submission project file for my submission to the 2021 mix contest and I, ha I have not opened this project file in a while so sorry if some things aren't working here uh, there are a lot of things that I can talk about uh, just right off the bat you know I can talk about the usage of filtering and reverb for this uh, main vocal stem I can talk about the usages of reverses over here Can't decide. Right, using some uh, reverse reverb, which I talked about in the transition techniques video, chopping these. And doing some automation there. I can also talk about using my own drums uh, for this build up here. But the main thing that I want to talk about right now is if my particles and only in a dream mashup is not my most popular, then this one is. It is the Potion, Slander, and Boss Fight remix mashed with Superstar. I'll play it just to refresh your memory. So let's talk about this one real quick. First of all, what is the Potions remix doing? What's going on over here? So as you can see, we've taken out all of the low end and we're doing some side chaining on it as per usual, you know, following my own tips, which I think is, you know, pretty important. For the most part, it's just the normal track, uh, just there's light chopping and then we also have a little bit of some other uh, tracks like Evil Inside and Evil Inside VIP. But for the most part, it's pretty normal. But with Superstar, the reason why I wanted to talk about this mashup is because I think it really highlights how you can use stems to do much more creative things with your mashups than you would have been able to otherwise. First of all, we just have the drums here, nothing too crazy. And I've got uh, this sample that I'm using as a layer.
to really get some punchy uh, snares there. But the rest are just from the superstar stems, which again are free to use. They gave these out on Splice. But then the main meat of it is going through all of these superstar synth stems and chopping them to match the rhythm of the Potions remix. Like if we take this one, for instance, normally it sounds like this. So again, going into all of these and, and re-chopping them. And now I also, on top of just re-chopping them, I also had to re-time some of them so there's some stretching going on here. You notice the usage of some reverse kicks to, again, these are really nice to kind of keep things flowing together. Using a little bit of reverb automation to fill in these gaps. Right, make that sound a little bit more smooth. And also towards the end, after kind of swinging these chops, I also did some, and you can tell that I did the reverb automation at the end, but I also did some re-pitching to get that kind of alternate melody. And yeah, honestly, that's really it. I know that this was, you know, a very <laughs> popular uh, mashup to a lot of people, but, and, and it was definitely time consuming. Don't get me wrong. It took me a lot of time to go through all of these stems and re-chop all of them and process all of them so that it worked. But again, you get out what you put in. So if you're going to put in the time to, to go through these stems and re-chop them, because the fundamentals are simple, right? Stretching, chopping, getting the timing right. It's just tedious to, to get it all in. But if you're willing to, to put in the tedious work to turn your mashup idea into reality, I think that um, you can definitely get some really impressive and really cool results out of it. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is that I would highly encourage you to mess around with other effects beyond just the EQs and the reverbs and you know the, the compressors and whatnot. Uh, you saw that little snippet with the delay in the Carbonara edit, so there's that as well. You saw me messing around with panning for some of these mashups. Stereo width is definitely a big one that you can mess around with how wide or how mono tracks feel. Another one is vocoding, messing around with vocoding, which I can actually show you right here. Because if we take a look at the Potions pre-drop vocal, I decided to try and remake that with Souvenir. And what I did is I vocoded it to, uh, this is just a saw wave that's playing a, a low F. And before I did that, I brought this into new tone. And as you can see, what I did is before these notes were all over the place, so I just went and I changed all of them to be playing this F note, make it monotone to match up with the potions. And then after I did that, that's when I vocoded it to the saw wave to get a similar effect. And you can hear the two layers. This is how the vocoding sounds like by itself. And then here's how the uh, new toned, monotone vocal sounds like by itself. So then together, it's definitely not the same effect as this. That ha definitely has a lot more complex stuff going on. But I wasn't trying to get the exact same effect. I was just trying to show, look, I'm doing something completely different that's mimicking what this other track has going on. Stop. 
Now, another thing that you guys might have been asking about, because I know that they talked about this a lot in the last season, was melody matching. Although I would say, personally, this, this is just my personal advice, is I would say, try not to overdo it, because we got a lot of melody matching in the last season, so that's something that the judges have heard before. So if you really want to blow them away, it's probably in your best interest to mess around with some of these other effects, like the filtering automation I talked about, some of these uh, more creative effects that we haven't really heard on the mix contest before. However, I definitely think it's useful to know how to do it, though, right? Because like, if you have to make a 20-minute mix, why not have a few of those uh, mashes be melody matching just for the sake of variety and something that you can just throw in there. But I would definitely suggest don't try to make that your main thing. I don't think that would really work well since it's something that's been done quite a bit on the mix contest already. There are a handful of different methods to do this melody matching. I'm going to show you three of the methods that I've used or the three methods that I've used. Uh, the first example here is with this overdose and stay mashup and actually uh, a little preview for you guys watching this as it's coming out. I'm going to be releasing this mashup the day after tomorrow's video. In other words, in two days from now. So you guys got to hear a little section of it, a little teaser. So let me go ahead and play this portion. So here we have the piano from Stay. And then here we do a little bit of melody matching with the vocals from Overdose. Right? So the way that I did this one is I just went ahead in the playlist and just manually uh, repitched all of these. This is also a really useful technique if you want to use different parts of the vocal, right? This is definitely not going to work because these other parts of the vocal are playing different notes. This is going to be, you know, super off. <laughs> so I apologize in advance, but just as kind of a, an example. Right, like if you want to use a different part of the vocal and not just the same part every time, the playlist is going to be a really useful way to do that because that way you can just get the different parts of the vocal that you want to use and repitch them as needed. The other example that I'll show you with the playlist is from another mashup taken from the KOC mix. This is Glide by Stephen Walking uh, versus Ready to Fly and some other tracks. So here we do a little bit of melody matching because here we have this melody from Glide. So I decide to match that up with the trumpet from Anywhere You Go. And again, we're just using the playlist method, going into these samples and repitching them. And again, the playlist is useful for this because notice that I'm using different sections of the trumpet for each one. So using the playlist allows me to do that and to, you know, switch through whichever section I might want to use. And then all together. And this is something that I realized, I probably should have talked about this in a much earlier episode. But I, I guess better late than never, I guess, right? Which is the option to have these de-clicking modes. Uh, you can see that they put in like little fades there automatically. Sometimes if you want to get rid of a little bit of clicking and fade between two clips, these can be uh, useful and handy in that regard. So I know that that's probably much more of a fundamental tip than the other stuff that I'm going over in this video, but uh, just going to throw that in there now that I remembered about it. Now the second method for melody matching that I'll talk about is using the playlist. And this method is really good if you only have like one or two parts 
or, or one or two samples, I should say, that you want to repitch. Like if you're repitching a vocal, you're only repitching one part of the vocal rather than, you know, say the whole vocal phrase and you're repitching different parts of it. If you're only dealing with one or two samples, this will probably work really well. And this I did for the deluxe and anywhere you go mashup, which is also part of my mix contest submission. Uh, they made us cut down the mixes to six minutes, so this part didn't get aired on the mix contest, but it was part of the submission as well, and you can see that on my YouTube channel. So again, we go into Deluxe. Copy down the melody with some variation. And what we're doing over here is we've got this. This envelope just makes it so that as soon as I hit the note, the sample plays. And as soon as I let go of the note, the sample ends. And we've just got this sample loaded in here. Just a sample from anywhere you go. We're putting some reverb on it, making sure to cut out the low ends, of course. And then, yeah, now you just put in the melody in the um, piano roll, and you're already good to go. And since I'm only wanting to repitch this one part of the vocal, it's super easy. And of course, we're side chaining it as well. And we have little bits where the normal acapella is brought back in as well. Just to kind of remind you where the vocal's coming from. But yeah, aside from that, you know, the piano roll method, again, if you have only one sample and maybe you've got a complex melody, it's super useful in that regard because you can just uh, notate the melody down and you're good to go. The third method uh, is one that I used in this without you and wake up bit, which I'll play uh, really quickly here. I'm painting the sky with the candy green and the clouds with silver lines. I will never say what you meant to me when you ask what's on my mind. I'll cover it up with the dust that settled down after all this time. So if we take a look at just the wake up bit by itself.
right? So we're having the wake up vocal chops follow the melody of the without you vocal. And what I did for this one is first as I took the wake up chops and I put them in the rhythm that I wanted. And then what I did is I recorded that, dragged it into new tone, and I used new tone to have it follow the, the melody of uh, without you. Now I can do that in the playlist thanks to the stretch pro mode. But the reason why I couldn't do it before with the stretch mode is because new tone preserves the formants uh, by default. And of course, with the normal stretch mode, you don't have any control over the formants. So nowadays, I don't really use new tone anymore for this stuff. I can just use the normal stretch pro mode and get the formants where I want them. But using new tone is another option. And depending on your workflow and how much you like the plugin, you might be able to get quite a bit of mileage out of that as well for these melody uh, matching uh, mashups. And now something that you guys might be asking about, depending on where you're at with this is, okay, so I know how to do kind of these melody matching stuff, but how do I even figure out the melody to match it to, right? Like how can I even get that right? And honestly, I would have to say that the answer to this is just practice. I used to be really, really bad at it, but I've been doing it for probably five years now, um, messing around with jotting down the melody of things. If you're not good at it starting out, when you do it more and more and more and more, you get better at it. Though there are a few tips that can make it a little bit easier. So as I mentioned, you know, practice is going to be key. I have so many project files personally that are like this, where I'm just having a track and I'm just practicing, can I get the melody down? So again, you know, a lot of it's practice, you know, maybe you want to mess around with trying to get the melody down uh, on some tracks. But again, like I mentioned, there are some things that can make it easier. The first one that can make it easier is try setting your piano roll to the key of the track. For example, Endlessly is an A minor for the most part, and Endlessly isn't actually a good example for this because it uses notes from outside A minor. But what you would do is go into Piano Roll Options, View, Scale Highlighting, select the root note, in this case A, and select the scale, in this case minor or minor natural. And there we go. And especially for tracks that aren't like endlessly, um, that stick to the key, then this is really useful because what the scale highlighting does is all of the lightly colored notes are in the scale and all of the dark uh, shaded like um, rows here are notes that are not in the scale. So if you have a track that's not like endlessly and actually sticks to the scale, then this is really useful because now you've uh, whittled down the options for whatever the right note might be, right? Because now instead of it being any of all of these notes, now you just know that it has to be one of these lightly colored notes. The other tip that I can give for some of these like really fast notes like this one, because if I go into the original, Some of these are really hard to, to make out. So there are two tips to make these fast notes easier to, to figure out what they are. The first one is you can just loop them. For example, what if I want to know what this note is? And once you have it looped like that, it's a lot easier to figure out, oh, it's this. Right? The other thing you can do as well is just you know, go ahead and slow down the track. You can slow it down on resample if you want to pitch it down an octave as well, or you can stretch it. Now it's going to be in half speed. So some of those fast notes are much 
uh, easier to figure out what they are. But again, the main thing is just going to be practice. These tips will definitely help to make it easier, I hope. But um, practice is definitely key to getting good at doing these transcriptions. Now, I think that that's actually everything that I wanted to talk about in terms of mashups and edits. If there are any other kind of questions you have about them or, or things that you were hoping that I would talk about that I haven't talked about at this point, then I think it would really be a smart idea to hop in the Discord and ask the questions there because there might just have been things that I forgot to talk about or that I should have mentioned but maybe didn't mention in as much detail as I should have. So tomorrow, uh, which is at least I'm planning on having it be the last video. If it's too long, I might have to split it into two. But let's say it's the last video. Tomorrow, I'm just going to be covering miscellaneous tips. In other words, everything that I've wanted to talk about that I haven't talked about already, I'm going to be talking about in the next video. So this is going to cover, you know, basically a little bit of everything. Some of the advanced transition techniques that I mentioned I didn't talk about yet. Uh, some of the more conceptual techniques, you know, things to keep in mind. I mentioned I would talk about what tracks can you use and what tracks can't you use. And, you know, just some other um, kind of more general or more miscellaneous tips and topics that I haven't addressed already. And then, assuming that's the last video, then the day after that, I will be dropping the mashup. But again, I think that that's about everything. I will see you guys. Take care.